So it's counting down. At this time, I'd like to call the Monday, January 9th, 2017 Planning Commission meeting to order. The first item on the agenda is a uh, call to order and roll call. Pid here. Price. Hema. Here. Charnel. Daniels. Lindell. Here. Dalton. Here. And we've got, uh, I forgot your name already. Ken Carpenter. Ken Carpenter. All right. And that brings us to number three, which is the approval of the agenda. Do I have a motion? A motion to approve the agenda. Got a motion by Mr. Hema. I'll second that. So I'll second. That we've got a second by Daniels, right? Lundell. Lundell. I'll, I'll get it. <laughs> You're good. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. That brings us to number four, which is the approval of the minutes from the December 12th Planning Commission meeting. So moved. Got a motion, motion by Mr. Dalta, a second, Dalton, a second by Mr. Hema. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. That brings us to number five, which is public input. Citizens may speak to issues not on the agenda. Before speaking, please give your name and address for the record and limit your comments to three minutes. Now, Jim, you're here for the uh, winter edition final plat resolution? No. 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 Okay. Discussion item B, 7B. 7B, got it. Okay. Um, having no, no other public members here, that brings us to a public hearing, which we don't have a, a public hearing this evening either. So that brings us to discussion item resolution 2017-1, winter edition final plat for South View Acres. Thank you. Jim's here to help me with the lights. Ah, good. Oh, that's good. All right. This is the proposed final plat for the winter edition. At our last meeting, uh, the Planning Commission reviewed and held a public hearing on the preliminary plat, which is the preliminary design of a proposed subdivision. And that was recommended for approval by the commission and approved by the city council. So the second step in this process is to prepare a final plat. And the final plat really is, is, is important because it's the document that's recorded with Goodhue County. So we're going from, in this winter edition, we're going from some land that's described by meets and bounds that is not platted property. It's not lot one, block one, ABC edition. There's some meets and bounds descriptions. So this final plat will clean that area up and it's, and it's redesigned the balance of the existing land owned by uh, Southview Acres Real Estate Company in this area. So the final plat as, as shown here, I've got in yellow, that's just for reference purposes, that's the proposed lot four, block one of the winter edition, and that's the site for the, for the Grand Stay Hotel. We talked about that at the last meeting. But there will be a new vacant lot created here, lot number one. Lot number two is the existing uh, warehouse building uh, occupied by Midwest. Lot three currently is occupied, that's the showroom office occupied by Midwest. Lot four uh, is the proposed uh, Grand State Hotel lot. Lot five is a new vacant developable lot uh, for future development. And then lot six, which is just south of the roundabouts. Here's where the roundabouts are connecting to uh, Highway 52. Uh, and just south of the west roundabout uh, is another lot, in this case lot one of block two uh, that will be available for development. So again, 
the importance of the final plat is subject to a recommended approval by the Planning Commission, approval by the Council. Uh, the plat itself gets filed with Goodyear County, and then anyone who would want to purchase property in this area uh, would purchase it by lot and block once it's been recorded. So it's a clean survey, updated legal description, um, and uh, it basically redefines you know existing lots. So uh, I would recommend approval of this final plat. There are some additional easements that we'll be working with the uh, property owners on and the surveyor to incorporate those into the final plat before it's obviously submitted for approval or, or recording with Goodyear County. Uh, there's also a, a title review underway of the property. We want to make sure that there's nothing else on the land that would affect this final plat so the plat would not be filed you know, before uh, those issues are, are looked at and understood. But we wanted on the city side, we wanted to to move the process forward with the platting because one of the important things to the city is Alexander Court here. Uh, in the plat, it's a 60 foot wide street, future street right of way, would be platted with Goodyear County and that plat then would dedicate that right of way to the city. And as we talked before, the city's moving aggressively forward to try to get a, a road designed, bid, financed, and built on a schedule that will coincide with the opening and the construction of the hotel. So we're, we're on, on, on the city staff side, we're, we're trying to encourage that the landowners and the developers move as quickly as they can with getting these things done, in part uh, in order to assure us that we've got the land for the right-of-way to build this, this future street to connect to the hotel. So with that, I'll stop with any questions on the, on the final plat itself that you've got. Uh, yeah, I have a question. Yep. On the... Uh, a lot itself, it's got towards the uh, southeast corner, it's got that, that pointed end down there. You know, it looks like a hook. Here? Yeah, what's, yep. what's that all about? <laughs> this just seems so odd that it's put together like that. Is there a reason that it had to go down that far and to that point? Yes. The highway department, uh, if, you, if you head over to Highway 52 right of way yeah. here, and, and you come across through the roundabouts, the roundabouts are located in this, in this right of way. Yeah. The state of Minnesota, through their survey and their design, condemned for the acquisition of the property that's within this area that I'm depicting on the map. So that's all state of Minnesota Highway Department. Uh -huh. So they, they basically chose the alignment. They basically surveyed the property. They condemned that property. And I don't know specifically, Bruce, if there was a, a reason why uh, it ended up in, in that particular configuration, but that was a MnDOT decision, and what this plat does, it bumps up to the area of right-of-way that MnDOT bought. You know, it could be drainage, it could be, it could be any one of a number That's of what things. I'm wondering, if it's a drainage area yeah. or something. That there. It just seems odd. Yeah, I, I, and one of the things we talked about at the preliminary plat stage and even with the commission at, at the hearing was these lots within the area that are being platted are not standard rectangular lots, and that's a result of, in part, the, the, the property that was left as a result of the Highway 52 County 24 improvement project and the right-of-way that was left after MnDOT condemned it. Okay. I mean, that, that formed the border, the, the west border of this plat and the south border. Those are MnDOTs. Jim's got a question. I think there's a the culvert there. Culvert, yeah. Dave, I have two questions. Uh, lot one is that a buildable lot? This, this lot, lot one is a is a small lot. It would be buildable under zoning. And the question in the future is going to be, Mike, if if that lot stays as lot one as an independent lot for sale, or depending on what happens over here, it, it could potentially be combined with one or or the other lot there. These these properties are subject to lease right now. So that's one of the other variables in this plat, and the final plat is an existing lease with, with Midwest and the property owners. Okay. So we'll see. But the short answer is yes, it could be developed. It's not the perfect size. It's not the perfect con configuration, but it could be developed. Um, and, then, and I think in your notes you said it's mainly the same plat as the preliminary plat. What changes were made between oh, preliminary and final? Anything? Not, not really anything significant. Uh, we'll add some easements um, when, they, when, the, when the final elevations of the road are, 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 are completed and, and the site design on the, on the hotel site it, itself, you know, those potentially could move some lines a little bit here and there, but essentially what you see is what you're going to get within 
some variation potentially. Okay. Yeah, so I don't see, it would be the same number of lots, basically the same configuration, but there's still some, sub, some possibility of some movement. And the cost of the roads and the sewer and water are all built into these? So, sewer and water is, is in place now through the existing easement, which is here. That's the 2000-2001 yeah. improvement project. Um, the street is not built. The street is proposed to be financed uh, through payment of the real estate taxes, a city portion of the hotel, and through assessments to Southview Acres Real Estate. So it's... So assessments and real estate taxes. Yes. Okay. Yep. Taxes from the hotel and, and assessments. Taxes from the hotel. Yes. Um. The, there's a tax abatement okay. process okay. that was approved by the city council. So essentially what's happening in that, Bruce, is the city portion of the taxes paid by the hotel mm -hmm. will be used to offset a portion of the cost of the road. Got it. The other portion of the road cost would be paid for by assessments. So it's really a, a development paid improvement. Okay. Yeah. That's all I needed on it. Just wondering mm -hmm. how it was going. <clears throat> I have no questions. I'll make a motion to approve. I've got a uh, motion by Mr. Dalton. Second. And a second by Mr. Hemma. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. That brings us to discussion item 7B, which is Jim Altoff concept plan. Jim is here tonight. Oop, kind of dark. Jim is here tonight to, to present the concept, so I'll be relatively brief. In the, in the packet, I sent a, an aerial photograph of the project area in the site and explained that uh, this is a concept plan review. This is not a public hearing. <clears throat> if Jim wants to go ahead with this project, following whatever he may hear tonight, uh, he can do that. He can make application, and we, he would come back then to the commission with uh, a public hearing and a request for a conditional use permit for the project. But before he continues down that path and, and invests additional dollars, this isn't unique. Uh, we will offer uh, the opportunity for, for developers to come in and have preliminary conversations with the commission, gather your questions, concerns, whatever. Uh, but again, in this case, the, the, the property uh, would allow a three-unit townhouse project to be built in this location, subject to the issuance of a conditional use permit. And Jim, this is much more legible. Uh, Jim has had... Uh, his surveyor put together a, a concept plan. Here is north going to the river. The river is, let's say, in this area here. Uh, Stoughton Street has already been vacated. That's basically undeveloped property, as you can see on the aerial photo. Here's the three units. The three units will be proposed to be serviced by a, a private driveway onto 3rd Street that would access these three uh, garages. Uh, the existing alley that's there, that's a platted alley, an original town alley. It's, it's not a particularly usable alley in terms of what Jim Altoff wants to do. Uh, so access would come off of a third onto the private property itself and then managed by a homeowners association. Because it's close to the river, I've looked preliminarily at floodplain issues and it looks like this project is built higher than the regulatory flood protection elevation. Uh, so if Jim does decide to go ahead, we'll make sure that, that that's the case with the final plan, but it does look like it's above the regulatory flood protection elevation, so it doesn't appear we have floodplain issues. The property is located within uh, the shoreland area, so there's some additional requirements uh, that the development would have to meet. Preliminarily, I've looked at those, and I feel that, that that's certainly uh, doable in these circumstances, so I don't see shoreland issues here. The size of the lots, the size of the units, the location of the units on the lot uh, certainly look like they will comply with the current zoning requirements. If they don't and Jim decides to go forward, we'll address those with the public hearing process you know, at that time. But for the most part, it looks like this proposal can satisfy the requirements. But in order to, to build this product, it is a requirement for a conditional use permit. But with that, I'll let Jim describe uh, any further, uh, you know, the, de the design of the development, his intentions for occupancy, that type of thing, whatever he wants to, to tell you. It's his show. I thought we already did that. 
<laughs> I'm sure I missed something. What, what the intent is to have 1,400 square foot single level townhouses, walkout basements, uh, probably going to market. Market appears to be senior orientated, um, good sized garages. Uh, we, maybe we can sell them. But there's a definite need for that uh, in this town. So that's all we got. Is it? Can he act, could he access from the alley or do you have to have do you have to have access from a street? You know, the, legally yes, but there's some great issues in there and I'm thinking that you've looked at it much more closely than I have. It might be more reasonable given the lay of the land to come off of a private drive in the street rather than come through the alley. It's gonna be tight. Yeah. I just didn't know if the if the cost of, you know, building a street is twice as much as it would be to come in off the alley that's already there. I, it would be a driveway, a private drive, not right, a street, right. but you're right, right. it would that, all that, be that, new construction right. and, and he wouldn't be using the 16 feet of land that has been dedicated as an alley, yeah. necessarily. We wouldn't necessarily prevent him from doing that, <clears throat> but. What do you think the DNR is gonna say? <clears throat> I don't expect opposition in this case. I expect um, comment. Yeah, I expect comment, but not opposition. Again, as long as he's above the, the regulatory flood protection elevation, um, there won't be a flood issue. Um, and the, and the, the shoreland provisions is, are really as much about what are, what are you going to see if you're canoeing on the river, mm -hmm. looking at this particular piece of property in this development. And I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing. What is the developer doing with, with stormwater drainage and runoff? That'll be. And that can be controlled. And how much impervious surface is being created? How much driveway, how much blacktop, how much land are the units covering on this site? And there is a minimum requirement in looking at it on a preliminary basis because there's, you know, unfortunately you can't see it here, but there, there's also a piece of property down near the river um, that won't be developed, that will be in your ownership. And when I've looked at the percentages, I don't see that that being an issue. There's quite a bit of undeveloped property through this area, particularly the vacated Salton Street between the river and the north side of these units. So I'm not expecting trouble there. Um, it's not a commercial industrial use. It's a low density residential use. And I, and I don't think the DNR will, will oppose to that. But like I say, we, if, if, if an application does go forward legally, we're obligated okay. to communicate. I could certainly, with Jim, communicate with the DNR in advance too before he makes that. Are there any other agencies or, or inter anybody else that's interested in shoreline stuff? Water other than quality? the DNR, not. Not the water quality stuff, guys. Um, the DNR really will handle that as well. Yeah. You know, soil water conservation district, yeah. that type of yeah. thing, but. Um, it, it really, it's, it's a little bit of a unique situation because of the original plat of these properties, including yeah. Stoughton Street, which was never going to be built, but, yeah. you know, that's, that's 80 feet of right away, right next to the river uh, that's being uh, donated to the city of Cannon Falls. That will remain as open space on developed land. Um, and then there's additional piece to the north of that that's undeveloped. I, I think if you look across the street, you know, we've got townhouses to the west, we've got townhouses to the north, or excuse me, to the south, um, of, of considerably greater density. And I'm not suggesting a number here, but just for purposes of example, if, if, if Jim would come in and say, you know, I want to put six units in here, and, and, and this is the land that I've got, um, yeah, the, dens the density of something like that, I think, would draw some attention to this, to this site from the DNR and others. They have a height requirement too, don't Got they? A height requirement too uh, on the buildings, and I think Glenn, it's 35 feet. I don't know why I'm looking at you, because, but probably 35 feet, 35 or 45 feet. <coughs> I didn't consider it an issue. I think it's 35. I didn't consider it an issue with this. What's your time frame, Jim? Uh, the spring. Uh, anything going on with that Third Street Bridge that would impact either the plan or his? The evaluation it will, will be underway in terms of the structural integrity and those type of things. But if the bridge stays, I don't see an impact. If the bridge goes away, I don't see an impact, at least with respect to, to this site and this market. 
I'm guessing that folks would generally rather have access and, and have the bridge open. Someone who buys here yeah. probably, but I just wonder if I mean if they're going to do any if it would impact his timeline based on what they might be doing on the bridge. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I, we don't know what the construction details may or may not be at this point, um, but it's like when it's been closed. You know, you can still get in and out of this site. You're just not going to get across the river. So what do we do? Just if you've got some questions, some suggestions, some concerns, it's an opportunity for the Planning Commission members to let Jim know, and he can decide how he wants to proceed. Well, I appreciate you trying to do something down there. I think we need places for people to live. Yeah, I think there's a need for it. Yeah. I'm sure you've had some interest, haven't you, besides you've had some other people already interested, haven't you, at this point? Enough to get you going this far. Yeah. Good. Is it you thinking senior housing mostly? I would bet you money on three yeah. hundred seniors. They're just they're leaving town. There's there's not there's not enough townhouses and condos. It's true. I think I sold three in the last two years. So a long time Cannon Falls residents in different communities because we couldn't find them a townhouse or condos. Yeah. Good. Look forward to see what comes up next. Yeah, me too. You don't need a motion or anything for from us nope, then or anything? Okay. That. Nope. nope, that sounds good. Good for you, Jim. Yep, thanks, Jim. That brings us to number eight, Planning Commission member comments. mentioned about more than one car on the third street bridge there so i kind of was paying attention to it yeah i've seen a few few times where well cars you know going it's across just, and another one's going right behind them it's like <laughs> well and i had the like i said i had that one kid that one day that jumped on the bridge with me and i just stopped thought i'd ask him if he'd actually seen that sign about one vehicle at a time not not one direction or you know whatever and he just really didn't seem to care. <laughs> but Ron uh, has talked to, to the police about that, and I know there's paying a little bit more attention to that. And I've been down there too. I looked after that. And yeah, there are seems like it's yeah. A lot of times I notice it just seems like oftentimes it's around school, school letting out and school getting you know getting started for for the day. And and I get the the logic behind jumping on because. You know, two cars can go across in the same direction faster than, you know, one and then waiting and whatever. But um, <clears throat> I don't know. I just, that bridge, if uh, if we don't take care of it, they'll just shut it down. <laughs> you know, it, it'll it just become a walking well, bridge before you know it. Way. In the future, it probably will anyway. Well, I just say, uh, you know, I personally, I like it because I'm on that side of town. Now, if yeah. there's something, if there's a reason I need to get to the other side of town, mm -hmm. that way is really handy when there's something going on downtown. Mm -hmm. You can kind of take that way and, you know, make it through. I know the, the Thursdays when they got all that activity and Thursday evenings, you know, it'll back up along that stop sign there uh, by Mill Street and... Mm -hmm. It's just a little little quicker getting through then, and you don't have to worry about the pedestrians. And so I, I know I'll I'll take it. You know I know my bank's up there on the corner, so <laughs> it's usually the handy handy way to get there. But this the county still doing a bat survey out east, east of town. I don't know if there's, I, I honestly don't know if that's been finished up or not. This is on the, uh, the extension of 
of uh, 24 from County 25 up to 19. That project had been delayed due to some uh, endangered species environmental concerns. But I don't, I haven't heard from Greg Isaacson recently if that's all been taken care of now and, and they're ready to go. I don't know. I don't know. I haven't been in touch, so. Never heard about that. Oh, yeah. Was that one referred to? That's still the southeast collector, right? It was anything north of 19 was considered the north side. And that one's probably would never happen because didn't somebody say the bridge would have to be extra large? What's that? I think somebody said the bridge would have to be extra large to go north on go north 19. 19. This gets us back just up to 19. Yeah. It doesn't go across 19. Originally, there was discussion about trying to hit 17 up there with something coming I think I don't know was it all the way back around to 20 or yeah across to 17 and then back back around to 20 but there doesn't seem to be much interest in financing and funding or need on going beyond 19 at least from the county's perspective and I know MnDOT hasn't looked at that so probably not enough traffic to demand it yeah I would think that that would be a a pretty expensive proposition right. for very little uh, actual use. Right. Anybody got anything else? I'll make a motion to adjourn. Got a motion by Mr. Dalton. Second. Second by Mr. Hema. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. So what did you say there was bad?